Hello, this is Christopher Kenworthy, and welcome to Cinematic Effects in After Effects. Now, one of the great things about After Effects is that you can make footage that doesn't appear truly cinematic look more cinematic. Because although the best way to get a cinematic look is to use the best camera, the best lights, and have everything going perfectly, that isn't always possible. Now, that's true even if you're using a full crew. I've worked on a feature film where I had a crew of 40-odd people and still I had to work in After Effects to get the result I wanted to make it look truly cinematic. Some of those shots just looked quite average. Equally, if you're using a simple camera like we've used here, a Canon 7D, you might find that the lighting conditions mean that everything looks just a bit too ordinary and you need to spice it up and make it look cinematic. Now, one of the main ways that you get the cinematic effect is by having shallow focus. If you look at this shot here, you can see that we have shallow focus. The actor's eyes and face and body are all in focus, but the far background is very, very blurry, and even the near background is quite blurry. And as the shot plays through, everything in the background is very blurred. That is shallow focus. You've got the foreground sharp and the background blurry. It's something that cinematographers aim for all the time. Now, if you shoot in very bright light or if there are certain conditions that mean you have to close the aperture on your camera down, that makes everything sharp. And if you shoot with the camera set on automatic, which is never recommended, then you often end up with very sharp footage all the way through. Now, if you can get this look where the background is out of focus and the foreground is sharp, it immediately feels more expensive, more luxurious and more like a real movie. So we can create that effect in After Effects. If you look at this shot here called writing, everything's in focus. Uh, the actor in the foreground is in focus, everything on her desk right through to the bookshelf and even the far distant wall there is in focus. If this had been shot correctly, and we shot it incorrectly on purpose, but if this had been shot correctly then she would be in focus and everything else in the background would be out of focus. So we'll create that effect using After Effects. We're going to use the pen tool quite a bit to draw masks. If you're not used to drawing masks, I'm just going to draw a quick one here. If you're not used to doing this, then there is a course called Expert Masking in After Effects, which I created, and that will get you up to speed with masks very quickly. You don't actually need to do it to be able to complete this course. If you just follow what I show you here, you'll be able to draw all the masks you need. But when you come to working on your own shots, you want to be an expert in masking. So make sure you check that course out as well. To begin with, I'm going to make two copies of this clip. So I'm going to edit and duplicate. I'm going to call the lower clip Blur. I'm going to switch off the eye icon down here of the writing clip so that it's invisible so we can see the blur being applied. And later on, I'm going to use the camera blur, camera lens blur, which looks like this. If I turn the radius up, you can, you can see that's a very beautiful and realistic blurring effect. I like that a lot, but it's quite slow to process. So while you're working, it's best to use a fast blur. So I'll just apply the fast blur here and over here, turn up the settings. And there we've got a blur that we can use while we're working and then we'll change it at the end. Switch the eye icon back on and now it's really just a case of drawing masks that allow that blurry layer to show through into this layer. So I'm going to go up to here and select the pen tool. Over here I've got Roto Bezier selected, make sure that's checked and then I'm just going to start clicking a line like this around the background. So I'm sort of cutting out the actor and making sure that everything in the foreground remains outside this mask. So there we go, right across here. Just keep clicking. This is very simple work. And there we go. You'll notice that because I drew the mask around her, it's worked in the opposite way, so she's gone blurred. So I just need to hit M, and then down here, you'll see there's the inverted box. Just check that, and it goes the right way around. If I just click off down here, 
you can see that's already not a bad effect at all. In a realistic shot, you wouldn't have the keyboard down here being blurred or any of this in the foreground being as blurred as the far background. It's just not how it would appear in the real world. So we need to lessen the blur in this area and keep it strong in the background. To do that, we'll use the Mask Feather tool. So again, go up to the Pen Tool menu and choose Mask Feather Tool. Then make sure your layer is selected to bring the mask up. And then you're just going to want to click on an area of the mask, perhaps down here, and drag that inwards. And you can see what that does is it softens the blur through this area. I'm going to do another one over here so that I can drag that in. And maybe even if I pull out a little, I'll do another one down here so that we can really make that keyboard come back into focus. Okay, I'm going to fit that back. And you can see there, if I click off, that now the blur is fading away into the background quite gradually. That's much more realistic. So over here, I've got this issue of the, the pen. Now I can try to mask very closely to the pen, draw all the mask points in, but it might be easier just to bring the mask feathering out. So I'm just going to click on the mask here, just next to the top of the pen, and drag towards the pen and that softens the mask out that way. Now over here, I'm going to click and drag in a little. There you can see we're creating that effect of the blur fading away gradually. I might not do much more than that at this point. It's, it's really not a bad effect if I was to play that through. Although just looking up here near her head, if I click back on the clip, it may be that the blurring isn't deep enough in this area just next to her head. So if you look at that, so I'm going to just get that mask feather tool again. And this time I'm going to draw this line so that it's just overlapping. The dotted line is overlapping the edge of her head. Now when we look at that, we should have a more realistic roll off of blur. That's not bad at all. Now one thing I have noticed while working on this is that the top of this bookshelf is showing. And again, that's not something that you would actually leave in place. So I'm going to shift click to get both layers, hit S, and then just select one of these percentages and change that to 105. And there you go, the top of that bookshelf is no longer in sight. So that's pretty much the effect you want and you can apply that to any shot where there's not too much movement. If there is movement you'll have to animate the mask throughout the shot and the masking in After Effects course would show you how to do that. One change I might make here, just looking at that, I might bring this mask a little closer to the pen after all because I think it's better to have a nice blurred background than a perfectly sharp pen. So that's looking a bit better to me. And a lot of this is personal taste and it's also about where you want people to look. If you don't need that pen to be sharply in focus, you could allow the mask to run over it a little, but I think it's best to see that because this shot is about her writing. So just to finish this, I'll turn off the upper layer and then I'll change the fast blur for the camera blur that we looked at. Just type camera there to find it. Camera lens blur apply that and I'll set this to 12. That's quite a strong blur. Switch the writing layer back on and although the temptation is to go really strong with this because it looks good, it's often better to be a little more subtle. So I'm just going to turn that down to 6 and that's actually more realistic. So it's not quite as deep but it doesn't draw attention to itself. That just looks like a real cinematic effect.